All right, guys, so let's go ahead and cover the sides of the heart here. So as we remember from class, I'm going to have a couple different sides of the heart. And the reason this is important is because when I access a heart on a cadaver or I'm viewing a heart through a picture, I need to know what side of the heart I'm looking at, right? So if I kind of draw the heart again, kind of like that big mango, which is how it looks to me. What we're going to see, we'll draw that in. Remember down here is going to be my base, and that's going to be right up against the diaphragm. On the quote anterior portion of the heart, okay, so we kind of circle that in, fill it in just about here, fill that in so it looks a little nicer. Remember, this is going to be the sternal costal portion of the heart or the sternal costal view. And remember what sternal costal means. It says what it is, is what it says. So if I'm looking at the sternal costal view, I probably can already think and already speculate that there's going to be some sternum in there and there's going to be some costal in there. Okay, so this is going to be my sternocostal view. This essentially is going to be my left ventricle. <clears throat> Remember as well that the apex of the heart is down here. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. This is going to be my right ventricle. Which then leads us to our next section, which is going to be my right atria. So this blue section here will be my right atrium. That'll be my right atrium, and this is what's going to be called my right pulmonary side. So those are going to be the big sides I can see on the anterior portion. I will also be able to see, draw this down in here, be able to see the left ventricle a little bit. And this is going to be the left pulmonary side. This is going to be my left ventricle. So when I look at the heart from the anterior section, I can see three sides of the heart. The most prominent is going to be the right ventricle. So here's a good picture of some valves. Remember, we're going to have two different types of valves here. OK, we're going to have the AV valves. And that's going to be my bicuspid. And my tricuspid valves. And then I'm going to have my. Pulmonary and aortic valves. Now, AV valves are going to have one type of design, and the pulmonary and the aortic valves are going to have a whole different type of design. So let's do the AV valves first. So what we have to understand is that the AV valves have a job, okay? And their job is to open up and allow blood to go from the atrium down to the ventricle. And their job number two is to not let blood go back from the ventricle into the atrium. I think think about that's a very really important job because as soon as blood goes down into the ventricle, my ventricle is then going to contract and push blood up through 
excuse me, the pulmonary arteries and the aorta. So the way these valves are made, kind of like this. <clears throat> so I'm going to have my actual leaflet up here. This guy here is going to be my papillary muscle. And then I'm also going to have this other little stringy tendinous cord that's going to be called the chordae tendinae. And this is going to happen on both sides. Okay, so I'm going to have the same structure over here on this wall as well. So what I need to have happen here is I need these valves to be open when blood rushes through. So I need the valves to be open when blood is going to rush through from the aorta down to the ventricle. Now, what I'm going to see happen here is as soon as the ventricle starts to contract, I need those leaves or leaves from the valves to close in order to prevent backflow. So what literally I'm going to have here, okay, so now I have blood going the other direction. So now blood's flowing upward. Is now those cordy tendinae are going to come up and they're still going to be attached to the leaflets and the papillary muscle. But now my leaflets are going to look like this. And what that's going to do is that's going to prevent blood from shooting back up into the aorta. So those are my AV valves. Now, pulmonary valves and aortic valves are going to operate just a little differently. Let's get rid of this picture here. The big difference I'm going to see first with my pulmonary valves, my aortic valves, is that I'm not going to have all the special pieces and parts that my AV valves do. Okay, so this is my pulmonary. And aortic. So what I'm going to see is this. OK, so my pulmonary and aortic valves, I'm going to see a little different setup here. So I'm still going to have my walls. And then essentially what I'm going to have is a big leaflet that kind of comes up. A big leaflet that comes up. So the big difference here is now that blood is flowing upward, OK? against gravity. So here's my flow of blood. I need blood to shoot through. As soon as that contraction is over from the ventricle and the ventricle is going to start filling back up, I'm going to get some backflow. OK, so essentially what happens when we move over to this picture here. Is I need those valves to snap shut. 
So essentially what I have here is now I need those valves to come together, those leaves to come together, because blood is now going to fill and it's going to push those leaflets down. Okay, so this is all blood. So now that blood's flowing downward, back attempting to get and backfill that ventricle, the pressure of that blood is literally going to snap those valves closed. Okay, so that's kind of how our valve system works. So just understand that my AV valves have a different setup, different design, different function than my pulmonary and aortic valves do. All right, so when it gets into coronary circulation, big thing to remember coronary circulation is that my coronary arteries will be called coronary arteries and my cardiac veins will be called cardiac veins with the exception of the coronary sinus, just to make things confusing, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw out first an anterior view of the heart, just like that, okay, again, to me, it looks like a big mango. The next thing we'll draw in is the aorta. And then we'll start drawing in our coronary circulation. So just for reference to this picture, I'm going to draw the left side in red. And I'm going to draw the right side in green. Okay, just to make things easy. Obviously, understand that this is all oxygenated blood going through the arterial system. So, coming off of the aorta, we're going to have a very short but significant left coronary artery. This is my left coronary artery. Coming off of the left coronary artery, I'm going to have two major branches. The first one's going to be this big guy here. And this big guy here is going to be called the left anterior descending artery. Probably remember this one's also called, quote, the widowmaker. The other significant branch I'm going to have coming off of the left coronary artery is going to be this one that kind of wraps around and goes around the dotted line around to the posterior side. This one that wraps around, we're going to use the term that means wraps around. And that term is simply going to be left circumflex. So those are a couple of the major branches off of the left coronary artery. Another major branch I'm gonna see is I'm gonna see a left marginal artery, which is gonna come off the left circumflex. And that's gonna be down the posterior side, so we're gonna use a dotted line. And this is gonna be my left marginal artery. Coming off the right side, I'm going to see a longer artery coming off, and that's going to be my right coronary artery. And my right coronary artery is going to give off very similar branching that my left coronary does. I'm going to see a right marginal artery coming down more the anterior surface of the heart. So this is going to be my right marginal artery. And then I'm going to see the right coronary artery kind of wrap around the back side, posterior side. And then it's going to form 
and it's going to anastomose, and it's going to form what's called the right posterior or the posterior interventricular artery. So this is my posterior interventricular artery. And that's the big system I'm going to see here for my coronary circulation. Remember, this is all going to be arterial circulation here. Those are the big ones. Those are the main, main arteries. So moving on to the venous system, remember my veins are going to be called cardiac veins, except for the coronary sinus. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll erase all this. We'll get another heart going here. And we'll obviously draw in our cardiac veins. Okay, so again, we're gonna draw out the heart. Now, please note on this side, now we're looking at a posterior view. Okay, so that's big to note here. First thing I'm gonna draw in here is going to be the cardiac sinus. I'm sorry, the coronary sinus. So this is going to be my coronary sinus. And this is going to be where all that blood collects before it goes into the right atrium. Draining into that coronary sinus, I'm going to see a couple big veins here. One is going to be the middle cardiac vein. Another one is going to be a small cardiac vein. And then I'm also going to see on the posterior aspect something called the posterior interventricular coronary vein. It's going to be right about here. On the anterior side, what I'm going to see is I'm actually going to have, and we're going to dot this in, and it's going to come around and drain into that coronary sinus. So this is going to be the great cardiac vein. So those are going to be my major, major veins going into my cardiac sinus. Now, in looking at the chambers of the heart, what we're looking at here is we're looking at the right side of the heart. We're looking at the atrium and we're looking at the ventricle. Really big things to note here is what is the job of that atrium and what's the job of the ventricle? Obviously, what my, the job of my atrium is, is I need to collect blood. And the job of the ventricle is I need to get blood to pulmonary arteries. Now, the big things to note here are in the right atrium, we're going to see a couple different openings, okay? So I'm going to see my inferior vena cava dumping blood into that right atrium. I'm going to see my superior vena cava dumping blood into the right atrium. 
I'm also going to see the opening for this coronary sinus right here. Okay, so that's where that coronary sinus is going to dump blood as well. The myocardium, the heart wall of an atrium is going to be very thin. Okay, so this one has a thin heart wall. I'm going to see pectinate muscle here. And it's just going to assist dumping that blood into the ventricle. The other thing I'm going to see here, and I'm going to put a big arrow and a big asterisk, is this fossa ovalis. Fossa ovalis is simply going to mean the oval shaped impression. And that closes up so it actually starts as a hole when we're a fetus and it allows fetal circulation to happen if we think about it we don't need our lungs during fetal circulation why because we're surrounded with amniotic fluid but we do need blood so obviously the mother provides that through the umbilical artery that goes through a system where you can actually get circulation happening but the lungs are not involved once we are start, we start to breathe air, that opening closes in the right atrium, and it becomes what's called the fossa ovalis. Here's my left atrium and left ventricle. Now, as we can see, with my left ventricle, really thick muscle here. Okay, so I see really thick muscle. I'm also seeing, and these are those chordae tendinae. Remember, those chordae tendinae are going to be non-contractile tissue. And then I can also see those papillary muscles, right? So those papillary muscles are going to live in the ventricles, in the right ventricle and in the left ventricle. The other thing I'm going to see here in the left ventricles exclusively is going to be where that left AV valve lives, okay? That left atrioventricular or what's commonly known as the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve. Remember what the job is of the left ventricle. I need to get blood out of my ventricle into the aorta and out into systemic circulation. The left atrium, its job is going to be getting oxygenated blood into left ventricle. It's going to operate in a very similar fashion as the right ventricle did. You're also going to see a little bit of what that fossa ovalis is or foramen ovale. So that's where that fetal circulation just kind of bypasses the entire cardiopulmonary system of the body and is obviously able to get blood down into circulation. The last thing I wanted to mention here, this is just kind of a top-down view. In case you are looking at a cadaver heart, big thing is orientation here. Okay, so as we can see, if I'm looking at the most anterior portion, so this is my anterior portion here, and this is my posterior portion. Pulmonary valve is going to be in front. Right behind that's going to be the aortic valve. Almost side by side is going to be that right AV valve and that left AV valve. What I want you to notice here is notice how different those valves look. You have a much different orientation of the leaflets, much different setup. And I think a top-down look is a really, really good way to notice that.